Now, he's a CEO and tech founder. What's good, Rob? You tell me, Duan, man. Can't complain. You know, 2020 has been uh, interesting, but it's still been full of blessings, you know, full of obstacles, but uh, full of wins as well. So I cannot complain, man. I woke up. Everything after that is a blessing. So, True story. True story. True story, man. Hey, so you are from Detroit, right? Indeed. Are, are, you, are you still in Detroit or? No, I ain't lived in Detroit. Uh in quite some time. Uh, I left Detroit when I was 20. Um, I go back every year because all my family, like everybody from, uh, you know, great grandmas all the way down to, you know, little nieces and nephews are in Detroit. So I don't go, I don't live there, but I go back every year though, every year. Right now I'm in Houston, but yeah, I go back every year. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Now being from Detroit and you say you left when you were 20, is that when you joined the military? No, uh, uh-uh. no. I lived life a little bit, man, before I, uh, before I went and fought for my country. Uh, so let me see. I left Detroit when I was twenty, and I moved to Virginia. So I moved to Virginia, uh, got out of Detroit, moved to Virginia. And I did every job you can think of. I was a stalker. I was. I did heating and cooling. Uh, what else did I do? I worked at Subway. I was a, a sandwich artist. Uh, I did all kinds of stuff. And then one day, um, you know. Uh, when I was getting off my heat, uh, heating and cooling job, I was like, yeah, this ain't for me, man. I damn near passed out in an attic and was like, I got to figure out something else. So uh, I went to the recruiter. A recruiter um, was like, hey, man, you know, uh, we giving out these bonuses. I said, oh, OK. Uh, how much is the bonus? They told me, you know, it was a lump sum of cash. So I said, OK, let me figure this out. And, um, you know, I just told him I don't want nothing with a gunner or a rocket or any of that in the job title. He was like, OK. Uh, how about computers? And here we are, man. I end up uh, taking my um, entry level exam, which is called the ASVAB, and I scored high enough on that. Um, luckily, that I could choose whatever job I wanted, and um, I chose a 25 Bravo, which used to be called Information Technology Specialist. I'm not sure what it's called now, but pretty much just computer stuff. And then it pretty much started, you know, what I'm um, doing right now. Nice, nice. So he's in the army. Indeed, yep. Salute, salute. Thank you for your service, bro. Same to you, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, being in the Army, doing IT, did you happen to get a lot of certifications, uh, security clearance, and things like that? Um. So, when I initially went into the military, it was just, like, like I'm saying, just being completely transparent. It was for the 20 grand. It wasn't for no <laughs> education. It wasn't for no certifications. It wasn't for nothing. I was like, they gave, like, okay, they gave me this bag. I'm like, I got I to gotta take it. I got to get it. But uh, once I got in there, right, um, I just noticed all the free training that they give you or all the training that they provide. And I would say I probably didn't get serious uh, about certifications until maybe, honestly, not probably until I deployed. So I was in for maybe two or three years. And then I noticed, okay, um, and then even that, it wasn't really to get the certification. It was like, if I get the certification, I'll get promoted. So that was my um, initial um, reason for, you know, trying to get certifications. So, um, I really started going hard when I got uh, deployed. So, um, while I was in the military, I got, uh, I got A plus, I got net plus, I got security plus, I got server plus, uh, a bunch of pluses. I got CAS plus, uh, I got CEH. Um, I got a ridiculous amount of certification because it was, it was free, you know, it was free. I just had to put the time in and the study time. And I was knocking them out. So yeah, while I was in there, I kind of I went pretty hard. I, I had um, I had about five or six certifications before I tapped out the uh, tapped out the military. That's one of the benefits about going into the military. They give you so much free training. Um, Indeed. And if and if you have a chance to do that while you're in, take advantage of that. I recommend it. Were you, were you able to do the same thing while you was in, or or no? Yeah, I went to a bunch of free training, man. Actually, I went through my first um, CCNA training class in September 11th. I was stationed in Germany wow. in a CCNA. Um, at the time, they used to do like a uh, Cisco University where they had part one, two, three, four. Yep, 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 yep. You remember that? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yep. And so I was actually in Ramstein, Germany, Kaiserslautern, and I was, had just got out of, out of a class. And then um, I'm walking in my dorm, and then I see people just crowding around the TV. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, man, I'm about to go to my room. <laughs> you know, and so I go to my room, and then 
you know, um, I should think I tried to call my, my uncle in D.C. and I couldn't get through. I'm like, man, why is the line busy? Like, what's going on? And so I tried to call my mom in Ohio, line just busy. I'm like, man, so I turn on the TV and that's when I see the towers and stuff. I'm just like, wow. And then like the whole military just changed. Like, yep. it was all Wait. kick it. But then after that, everything just, nah, it's, it's, it's real out here. You know what I mean? Yep. So. Yep. Um, and that's one thing that, um, that I honestly, I miss and kind of took, I'm not gonna say I take it for granted, but I don't went a lot harder with training if, um, I would just notice, you know, how how good it was and how uh, much it would pay off and how much how valuable it was. Because a lot of training I would go to, and I'm uh, while we in here, I don't want to be in here. I'd rather be doing something else. But you know, people would pay. Th- people are paying thousands of dollars or you know tens of thousands of dollars um, to get this training, and um, you know we was getting it for free, man. So yeah, yeah, that's 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 one thing I do miss for sure. But I ain't, I ain't gonna say it's free because you because you damn sure pay for it. It may not be uh, monetarily, but they don't get it about you, man. No matter what, so right, right. We're, we're gonna pause here for one moment. Hey, All right, hey everybody that's just now joined us. I am Dwayne Lightfoot, and I have Dwayne Rob Roberts from Master IT. He's a tech, hey, he's a tech CEO and IT trainer. And what we're talking about today is his journey into IT and becoming a tech CEO along with how to get in IT. So get your pen and pad ready, be ready to take notes, and we're going to quiz you once it's done. Back hey. <laughs> hey, so what? Hey, can you do um, one other thing before we continue? Uh, if you're in the chat, could you please um, like this video and um, share it? And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to uh, Dewan's channel. You're always coming with, with fire, uh, good gems, and he's actually... Um, a practitioner, what he's talking about. He's not just talking, you know, about network engineering or CC, uh, CCNA or Cisco. You know, he's uh, went from the bottom, you know, now he at the top of the mountain. So uh, he's a good guy to follow. Thank you, bro. I'm going to cut you a check after that. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> you can't have it right now. We got to wait for it. <laughs> nah, but seri- in all seriousness, um, Rob, yes, since sir. We're, we're talking about how to get in IT and we mm-hmm. both are veterans. If you could do it all again, would you do it? The military? Correct. To get experience, uh, to get IT experience. Let's um, specify it. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead or not, but... Go ahead. You know, owning my own company was because of uh, the military, right? Um, being in the military is just... You just got to be a jack of all trades. And then, you know, some people, maybe not. But for me, you know, I got a lot of leadership skills from that, you know, because, you know, it's not the best. It don't feel the best. But a lot of situations I got thrown in the fire. You know, it's just like, hey, you got to figure it out. Ain't, ain't nobody else to talk to. Because um, a lot of the the, the uh, units that I was attached to, I was an IT guy. It wasn't nothing to talk about. Then nobody know. You know, the guy before me was a cook or something. And, they, and I come in there and they think no matter what, I don't know. You know, because you already know, you know, when you're going through uh, uh, military training, you know, when you go to AIT, when you're trying to learn your job, you don't really learn it. They just stuff everything down your throat and, you know, hopefully you catch something. So when I got to my first unit, it was like, oh, man, they, they want me to know what I'm doing. <laughs> Wait a minute. But uh, but it worked out, man, because like I said, once I knew, you know, it's, it's a difference, you know, learning something and learning something and somebody yelling at you, people was pissed off, stuff is turning off, stuff is breaking. And it's like, okay, next time this is not going to happen. So, um, that was kind of, you know, a long story to say, yeah, I, I would definitely do it again, man, because I don't see any um, any downsides. Nice, nice, nice. So the military is a great way to gain experience. It's not the only way, but it is an option. Um, they give yep. you, you get not only do you get entry level training, but you have the ability to gain high level training as well. Um, if you're interested in IT security, it is possible that you could. They go to the military, get IT security training, and maybe even get a bonus like Rob got the 20 bands. And I don't know where the hell that money is at. I do not know. Man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I know where it's at. It's at the BX. Another thing, um, the one I'm sure you already know is you can get, possibly, depending on what you're working on, you can get a security clearance as well, which is definitely like a bonus. You know, uh, companies, especially government companies, are hiring you just for having... Um, um, a security clearance. And like you said, there's other avenues for uh, getting experience, but if you want 
well-rounded experience and touch a little bit of everything, you know, the military isn't isn't a bad choice. Now, um, before we move on from the military, we talked. You mentioned the security clearance. Uh, uh, something that people need to know: a security clearance is great if you want to be in DoD, um, banks, ba- banking, um, yep. g- any government sector that needs some type of private. Um, trust or a public trust or even a government security clearance. Either way, it costs a, a company normally for like a top secret clearance about $20,000 mm-hmm. to pay for you to go through the process of getting a security clearance. So if you go to through the military, they'll automatically give you that f- for free, you know, through government dollars. And then once you get out, now you have a security clearance that you can go into the field with already. You want to talk about yep. that a little bit, Rob? That was, that was one thing that I actually regret is because um, I let my security clearance uh, lapse. Um, even though I don't directly maybe need it right now, it still would have been a good little, you know, uh, ace in a hole for myself. Because um, like you were saying, the security clearance, if you already got it, you're already ahead of somebody else that doesn't have it. Because like you said, the employer has to go through all this different stuff. They got to spend this 20 grand and then they got to go through all these FBI agents and they got to find this person and find that person because um, if you guys don't know, it's pretty thorough. It's not just you check out an application and whatever you say on there is cool. Um, I can't remember because I don't want to tell a lie, but I know they go back. Is it five years or 10 years as far as people you know or something like that? Man, they go out. They go back as far as people open their mouth about because, <laughs> you know, they, they interview people. And then once people they ask people like who right. they know. And so it's like a web that they go through of people. Yep. And that's another thing um, with that. Uh, you got to make sure your credit is good to go because, you know, if you're not uh, responsible with your credit, that can kind of be like, OK, this person is $100,000 in debt. You know, all their credit cards are in red. They might sell some information. They may, you know, they may not be trustworthy. We can't trust them with some top secret stuff and they can't take care of their personal stuff. So, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, nice companies that are still if you if you if you, you know, are good enough and if they believe that you um, will do the job, they'll still, you know, spend the bread on you and uh, take you to the training, but you damn sure got to step ahead if you already got the uh, security clearance for yourself. For sure. All right, so once you got out the military, um, how was your transition from the military? Um, I know I'm supposed to have like a, like a horror story, like I was, you know, underneath the freeway and didn't know what was going on. It was it was sweet, man. It was it was good. And the only reason I say that, um, and I tell, you know, um, you know, all my guys and my girls, because I still got troops um, that's still in the military, um, and I just tell them like, you know, cause you, cause when you're in the military, when you're in any job, you kind of go through phases where I can't do this. I can't do it no more. It's a wrap. I'm done. You know, you may just be talking, but me, I kind of knew when I got to a certain point that I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to, uh, just to branch out. And it's, I, it's just me personally, not nobody else. I just felt like I had got what I needed to get from the military. Um, when I got out, I was a, uh, uh, a E6, which is a staff sergeant. I had no desire to be E7. I had no desire to be an officer. I had no desire to be a warrant. I could have been any of those things, but I just I just didn't have no desire um, for it. So uh, I forgot the question. What was the question? <laughs> uh, now, we were talking about your transition from the military. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. Right. The transition. So the transition was cool just because I started about a year and a half, almost two years out. Like I knew for sure that I was getting out. So I started my transition early, meaning that okay, by the time I get out, I need to have this amount of money saved. By the time I get out, I need to have these certifications. By the time I get out, I need to have this number of connections. So um, I knew one of the big things about getting a job was who you know. I'm cool, super smart, blah, blah, blah. But if nobody knows me, you know, it kind of doesn't matter at the same time. So that's what I started doing. That's kind of why before I want to say like 2015, 2016, I didn't even know what LinkedIn was. You know, LinkedIn is not sexy. It's not cool. It's not where, you know, most of your friends are, but it's definitely where opportunities are. And once I figured that out, like, okay, the people that um, own these corporations, the people that are actually giving people's jobs are on LinkedIn. I probably need to get on LinkedIn and start rubbing shoulders. So long story short, um, I had a gig before I even got out, man. I um, was moving and shaking, getting certified. I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. And um, I had two months...